In this video, I'd like to take you through an end-to-end -end example of using XJBoost on Amazon SageMaker. And I'm going to throw in a lot of the new features that we recently added at reInvent. Okay, let's get started. So first of all, you should grab my code in this GitLab repo. Okay, so here it is. And you'll find the notebook here. So just go to this URL, clone this repo and open the notebook in your favorite Jupyter tool. Here I'm using a notebook instance on Amazon SageMaker. Okay, so the first few cells, just make sure we have the latest and greatest uh, SDKs. Okay, in particular, we really want to make sure we have the latest SageMaker SDK um, to uh, use the newer features. Okay, then we want to restart the notebook to make sure all those upgrades are taken into account in our environment, right? Next, I simply import those SDKs, SageMaker and a few other things, grab the default bucket to store my data, the region name, I mean the, the usual stuff for, uh, for SageMaker, okay? Uh, and I'm gonna use uh, Boto3 here because I want to show you the kind of the low level APIs this time so that you really understand what's going on and, um, and you know, you could absolutely rewrite this notebook and use the SageMaker SDK only, and I'll probably end up doing it. But uh, for now, I want to show you the low-level APIs and uh, and point you at the specific things that happen with the newer services. Okay, let's grab a data set, and uh, well, I'm sure you've seen this one before. I've used it a bunch of times. It's a direct marketing data set showing uh, features for customers and uh, a label that says yes or no did that customer accept the marketing offer okay so pretty typical stuff integers strings categorical variables etc we have a little more than 41,000 lines and uh, 20 features and of course the label okay and the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to use SageMaker Autopilot to build a model automatically, okay? So in theory, you could pass that full data set to uh, SageMaker Autopilot and you know give 100% of the data set to Autopilot for it to, uh, to do its thing. But I, I like to keep a small part of the data set on the side to run extra validation uh, and testing at the end of uh, training, okay? So what I'm doing here is simply splitting the data set 95% uh, will be used by autopilot and I'll just keep 5% outside of the autopilot process. Okay, uh, one really, really important thing. Okay, please, please pay attention. At the moment, uh, SageMaker Autopilot works with CSV files and yes, this means features need to be comma separated. Okay, if you're using columns or spaces or anything else, it's not going to work. Okay, I'm sure we'll add this uh, capability really quickly, but for now you really, really have to use commas. Okay, so make sure you save to CSV and nothing else. So these are the two files post uh, split. Then I will simply upload the 95%, so the training set to S3, and then I'm going to set up the autopilot job. Okay. Uh, I guess the first thing is how long do I want this job to run? So I can pass some completion criteria. What should be the maximum amount of time a given job can, a given um, a candidate can run? How many candidates do I want to run? Here I'll stick with the default value, and that job is going to run for uh, a little while. Um, if you want to um, shorten the AutoML job, then you could say, okay, just give me. You know, just try 50 candidates or 60 or 100 candidates. Um, of course, that potentially means you won't get as uh, accurate results as you could. But if you just want to quickly test it, then it's a good way to say, hey, you know, give me uh, give me fewer candidates, and uh, and the job will be much shorter. Okay. Um, and the last way to uh, keep the job under uh, time constraints is to give it a maximum amount of time. Okay. So here my job will not run for more than, a, than an hour. So even if I said, hey, try, uh, you know, 300 candidates and that takes more than an hour, then the job will, will be stopped, okay? So you have different ways to keep the job under uh, timing constraints. 
Then of course, I need to uh, define the location of the data. Okay, so basically passing the uh, uh, prefix for the for the file that I uh, just uploaded. And I need to specify which column I want to predict. So here it's that Y attribute. Remember, it says yes or no, did the customer accept the offer? Okay, the target attribute that we want to predict. And of course, where do we want to save the model? So we could keep it at that. But, you know, just to show you, you can actually specify the problem you want to solve. So here it's, of course, a binary classification problem. At the moment, autopilot supports linear regression, binary classification, and multi-class classification. It would figure it out automatically, but again, if you want to force the model to, uh, to use a specific problem type, you can do that. And uh, accordingly, you can also specify the metric to use for evaluation. So you can use accuracy, uh, mean square error, and you can use F1 and F1 macro for multi-class classification. So here, I will use F1 because the data set is highly unbalanced, uh, about A to 1. It's about, uh, yeah, biased A to 1 towards the, uh, the, the negative class. Most people don't want the marketing offer. So accuracy wouldn't be a really good metric. So I'm using F1 instead, okay? And then I can just fire it up, okay, with the uh, create, AutoML, um, here we are, with the create AutoML API. And, you know, passing the job name, the input config, the output config, the job config, the objective, so the problem type want to solve, and the role. Okay, so basically everything we defined above. And that's it. Okay, so this gets the training job going. And we can actually track the, the progress of this with the describe AutoML job API. And we can easily loop every 60 seconds or so. And you'll see something like this. So first, it's going to analyze data. So it's going to look at the data set, figure out uh, what kind of uh, pre-processing and feature engineering it should do. Okay. And once this step is complete, as we will see below, um, autopilot will define the list of candidates it wants to evaluate and it's going to generate notebooks showing you all these details then it's going to apply feature engineering for the candidates and then it's going to use uh, model tuning so hyperparameter optimization on the, on the candidates to grab uh, every tiny bit of accuracy okay and then after that either the uh, you actually have enough time to try out all the candidates or you get stopped by the time limit that you defined. And I think here I'm getting stopped, okay? So, like I said, once the analyzing data step is complete, um, you can already look at the notebook. So you can actually uh, stop and start, uh, stop and resume this cell, right? You don't have to wait for the end of the job. Once you see that feature engineering has started, you can actually stop this cell and you can, uh, you can read this stuff. So we see here that um, we have two notebooks. We have a data exploration notebook and we have a candidate definition notebook. So let's take a quick look. So the data exploration notebook is exactly what the name says. It gives us uh, information and stats on the data set right and uh, how many unique values we have for each feature and, and basic stats etc etc okay so just uh, stuff you would probably do yourself here it's just done automatically which is nice and the candidate definition notebook that shows us which candidates have been evaluated right so we can see different pipelines that autopilot will look at and a pipeline is a combination of pre-processing feature engineering and training okay and we can see that different candidates and the different combinations that are that are evaluated okay it's quite a long one so you can actually run this code and, um, and the, the benefits are first of course you understand exactly how the model has been designed and, and trained and if you want to tweak further then fine you know you can just run that code and you can uh, keep tweaking right 
uh, and we see hyperparameter ranges, etc. All right, so I won't spend too much time here. Uh, you can uh, you can take a look at it. It's really really important. The once feature engineering is complete, autopilot then goes into uh, model tuning. Okay, so it's going to pick the top pipelines and it's going to run hyperparameter optimization. So while this runs, uh, you can use the uh, experiments. SDK from the SageMaker experiment service and you can very easily grab all the ongoing tuning jobs in a pandas data frame and so you can view all the all the metadata and the hyperparameters etc on those uh, tuning jobs so uh, while this runs you can see how well you're doing on tuning uh, you can compare this to prior experiments um, here I'm really just using one API from the from the experiments SDK, but there's there's more to it, right? So keep uh, keep digging. And finally, once model tuning is complete, we can see the top candidates. So here we see the top ten candidates that have been um, identified by Autopilot, and they're sorted by decreasing objective metric, which remember in this in this case is the F1 score. Okay, so I can see my top model achieves an F1 score of 0.79, which is quite good. If you try to run this um, um, XJBoost code on the, on the dataset manually, uh, and you try to pick uh, your own hyperparameters, the best you can hope is probably 0 0.64, 0 0.65. I've used this in, in, in many workshops, and this is usually what we get. So 0.79, almost 0.80 is actually very good. This would be a, a good classifier. We can see what's the top uh, job. Okay, we can grab its name. We can see which containers are actually involved in that pipeline. Remember, it's not just one job. It's, uh, not, it's not just one model. It's actually a combination of uh, models for processing and prediction okay what SageMaker calls an inference pipeline and we can see this one is actually based on XJBoost right next of course we want to deploy that best candidate and I'm going to deploy it with uh, SageMaker model monitor so SageMaker model monitor is uh, another capability from SageMaker that lets you capture incoming data uh, data sent for prediction to the endpoint and if you want, you can also compare it to the baseline. You can compare it to the data that was used to train the model. And so that lets you detect missing features or data drift or other quality problems with incoming data. So it's, uh, it's important to have that. So first, let's create the model um, and you know, basic, basically register that best candidate as a SageMaker model. Then we can set up the location where we want to capture data. Here I'm using an S3 bucket. Please make sure it's in the same region as, uh, as SageMaker. Okay, so I'm using uh, EU West one here. And then I can define the capture configuration. Basically say, yes, I want to capture data. This is where to capture it. I want to capture 100%. Okay, you, can, you could sample if you want. I want to capture all incoming data and all predictions. Okay, so both input data and output. And these are the content types to look for, right? Pretty simple. Then create the endpoint configuration, which is uh, business as usual. We just need to pass this extra data capture config parameter. Okay, and then create the endpoint and wait for a few minutes for the endpoint to come up, right? And then uh, we need to send it some data to make sure that it works and uh, because also we want to make sure that capture works. So just for fun here, I'm uh, using that uh, test data set that I kept on the side to, uh, to compute manually the F1 score, okay? Now you could just send data for a prediction here. It's just a, you know, a, little piece of, a little piece of code to show you how to compute F1 manually if you wanted to do that. So basically I'm looping uh, through the samples of this test data set, invoking the endpoint and then looking at the answer and uh, and scoring, marking each, uh, each sample as a true positive, true negative, false positive, false negative, right? Okay, and, uh, and 
takes about you know 30 seconds then based on that i can print my homemade confusion matrix okay so lots of true negatives uh, and you know some false positive and some some false negatives but okay it's not too bad right precision is 63 percent recall 95 and f1 is 76 percent so a little below that 79 number that we got so again you might want to save some data to, to check that uh, um, the uh, validation metric is uh, is uh, matched and is uh, reproducible uh, with uh, real life data. So you know, close enough, close enough. Now I can take a look at the data inside the capture file, right? So just print the first few lines, and it's pretty much what you would expect. So I see CSV input data. Okay, so that's a sample here from my test set and I can see the output right which tells me no um, this uh, person is not likely to accept the marketing offer okay so again capturing input and output um, and capturing 100% here remember you can decide if you want input only output only and you can sample as well okay so I'm gonna stop here um, if you want to know more about um, uh, SageMaker Model Monitor, we have extra notebooks. I will add the URLs in, uh, in the video description. And they show you how to train the baseline, how to compare um, incoming data to that baseline, and how to detect um, a model uh, data quality problems. Okay? And of course, don't forget to delete the endpoint to stop paying for it. Right. So... This is what I wanted to show you, end-to-end uh, -end example, going from a data set to a trained model using SageMaker Autopilot, SageMaker Experiments, and SageMaker Model Monitor for model quality. So I hope this was informative. If you have questions, please uh, ask questions in the, in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye-bye.